Good morning, it's Friday the 6th of January and it's National Take Down the Christmas Tree Day. And a big happy birthday to Rowan Atkinson, Eddie Redmayne, Nigella Lawson and Alex Turner. It's been a week for New Year's resolutions and new promises from party leaders. Wednesday saw PM Rishi Sunak lay out his plans and on Thursday, Labour leader Sakir Starmer responded with his first big speech of 2023. He was quick to call out his Tory counterpart, claiming it's time for a new style of leadership in number 10. Amidst all the chaos is a growing impatience for change, for real change. And yes, as they've done throughout our history... The British people are turning to Labour to provide that change. And change was certainly the buzzword, with Sakir promising long-term solutions to Britain's problems under a Labour government. Top of the list is the Take Back Control Bill. Yep, that's an old Brexit slogan, which could see more powers over things like childcare, transport and housing devolved to local communities. He's also committed to greater NHS funding and pledged to repeal the Tories' new anti-strike laws, saying compromise is the only way to solve industrial disputes. Meanwhile, Shadow Chancellor Rachel Reeves has been doing her bit to inspire voters. For many people, there's no hope anymore. People just feel, oh, it's just going to carry on like this. Nothing can be done. Um, you know, we're on in decline as a country. That's not how Kia feels. That's not how I feel. As the NHS experiences a perfect storm of strikes, COVID, RSV and flu, the healthcare crisis has been at the top of everyone's agenda this week. One of Rish's five promises was to cut down NHS waiting lists, but Nick Holmes, CEO of the East Sussex and North Essex NHS Foundation Trust, says a cross-party solution is urgently needed to address the issue, especially in social care. If we're going to have one significant political shift, it has to be a long-term solution to to funding and supporting and investing in social care. Shadow Chancellor Rachel Reeves says Labour have a solution to address staff shortages in the NHS. And we, we know that it takes time to train doctors and nurses, but under Labour, the cavalry is coming. We will invest in the workforce in the NHS. No, not that kind of cavalry. Sir Keir Starmer unveiled Labour's plans to get more healthcare staff trained up during his New Year's speech on Thursday. We will have a fully funded plan to bring in, you know, thousands and thousands more nurses, more doctors, more medical staff coming into uh, the NHS, because in the end, that's the only way we're going to get out of this. Thursday saw confirmation that the government's plan to privatise Channel 4 has officially been scrapped, with Culture Secretary Michelle Donnellan claiming structural reforms were a better route forward than the proposed £1.5 billion sale. And it turns out the plan to sell it was apparently born out of revenge after the channel replaced then Prime Minister Boris Johnson with a melting ice sculpture during a debate on climate change back in 2019. We kept the invitations open to the leaders of the Conservative Party and the Brexit Party. They have not taken up their places yet. Instead, a reminder, the ice caps are melting as politicians around the globe fail to cut greenhouse gas emissions in time to stop rising temperatures. Former Culture Secretary Nadine Doris, who championed privatisation, was critical of the decision, but shadow levelling up Secretary Lisa Nandy welcomed the U-turn. It would have been a huge act of economic vandalism to sell it off to the highest bidder, and it's a relief that the government has finally seen sense and backed down. It was Groundhog Day in the United States on Thursday as the House of Representatives failed to elect a new speaker for the third day in a row. Former House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy entered the race as favourite to become Speaker of the House, but after 11 rounds of voting, he still failed to reach the required 218 votes. It's thanks to a small group of mostly far-right Republican rebels dubbed Never Kevins who refused to back him, and with the party holding only a slim House majority, it's been enough to bring the election to a stall. Representative Ryan Zink, who resigned from Trump's cabinet in 2018, says things have gotten out of hand. I think it's embarrassing. I do. And there, there's, now there's a lot of hard feelings on, on, on both sides. Again, you have 90 percent of the caucus, 90 percent of the caucus standing firmly behind Kevin McCarthy. Still to come on the Smart 7, Chelsea falter against Man City and Shania Twain's ready to collab right after this. Welcome back. 
Thursday night saw Chelsea take on defending champions Man City in the Premier League. It's the first of two meetings for the sides this week who are set to face each other again on Sunday in the FA Cup. It was a cautious game that took a Riyad Mahrez goal in the 63rd minute to seal the victory for City. That puts Pep Guardiola's side just five points behind Arsenal as we approach the halfway point of the season. But with games against Man United and Spurs in the next two weeks, he's conscious they need to hit a winning streak. A big challenge for us, but important in these three Premier League games. Stamford Bridge, Old Trafford at home against the Spurs, so start to winning is so important for our mood and our confidence and being close for the top of the league Arsenal. She was officially crowned a music icon at last year's People's Choice Awards and now Shania Twain revealed she's ready to collab with the next generation of icons on The Late Show earlier this week. The country pop singer says she loves being an influence for modern pop stars like Post Malone, Taylor Swift and uh, the Jonas Brothers and pitched what sounds like it could be an awesome TV show while she was at it. These are artists that were kids, you know, four or five, six years old, yeah. growing up to my music and now they're grown up and able to express whatever that inspiration was to me. So it, re it feels really, really good. I just want to sit down around a campfire with these guys and say, let's just see what happens, you know? What? It's January, you're back at work, and obviously you hate your boss. But do you hate your boss as much as Renfield does? The first trailer's dropped for a brand new horror comedy, which stars Nicolas Cage as a spectacularly camp Dracula, alongside his long-suffering personal assistant Renfield, played by Nicholas Holt. It hits cinemas in April, and it looks absolutely insane, so mark your calendars. My boss, he's different. You can't get him out of your head. No. I need your assistance. I'm coming, Martha! Oh, you feel like he could destroy you with the snap of his fingers. Wouldn't even need to snap. Ah! Okay. Uh-huh, that sounds familiar. Yeah, what? This has been The Smart 7. Wherever you're listening, do us a favour and hit the follow button. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Have a great day. Produced and published by Daft Dogs.